Hello, and welcome to Intertech's Oxygen Blast series. Today's talk is on JavaFX, the future of Java user interfaces. We'll take a look. My name is Jim White. I am the Director of Training and Java Instructor here at Intertech. If you have any questions about the material you hear in our presentation uh, today, or if you have a question about Intertech in general, please feel free to email me at jwhite at intertech.com. In the first part of my presentation today, I will introduce you to JavaFX. What is JavaFX and how does it relate to other technologies? We'll also take a look at what JavaFX is not. There have been uh, numerous blog postings and articles about JavaFX out there. It's been a product that's been in the making for over two years and some of them have been a little bit off the mark. So we'll take a look at uh, not only what Java is, or I should say JavaFX is, but what JavaFX may not be as well, hopefully dispelling some of those rumors. We'll also learn why you want to use JavaFX as it relates to other Java products as well as how it might relate uh, to competing products. Why use JavaFX over other Java or competing products? By the way, we'll also take a look at some of those competing products. With an understanding of what JavaFX is, We'll also look at creating a simple JavaFX application. So in the first part of our presentation, we'll take a look at what you need as far as tools are concerned to do JavaFX development. We'll look at how to code, compile, and run your very first JavaFX application. In looking at the JavaFX applications, we'll look at also how they run in several different types of environments to include desktop, browser, and mobile environments at least mobile emulators today. And we'll also look at grown-up JavaFX development, that is, using IDEs to develop JavaFX applications and what IDEs support JavaFX development today. In the second part of the presentation, you'll take a deeper dive into JavaFX script language and API. We'll take a look at the basics of the JavaFX language syntax. We'll take a look at some of the core API and beyond that, we'll also start to explore some of JavaFX's GUI API. The JavaFX GUI API is really at the heart of what JavaFX is all about. I'll wrap up by providing you a list of resources for future JavaFX research and also some resource links to tools, blogs, things of that nature that might help you in your JavaFX experimentation. By the way, this presentation is available online. You'll find the slides and the demo code listed at the various intertech.com links that you see on the screen. So what is JavaFX? Well, in fact, it's actually a family of products. Most importantly, we have the JavaFX script language. Most people just call this JavaFX, but in fact, JavaFX is that family of products, so JavaFX script is the formal name for the scripting language, which is going to provide us a rich user interface to all sorts of different types of platforms. Again, browser, desktop, and mobile. The syntax of this new JavaFX scripting language will look very familiar to many of us, especially those of us who do Java development. It looks a little like Java. It also resembles a little bit of JavaScript, as well as if you've ever done any kind of scalar vector graphics type of work, you might see some resemblance there as well. In addition to JavaFX script, there is JavaFX mobile. This is the environment, or the framework, if you will, uh, to have JavaFX used on mobile platforms. In fact, one of the specialists at Sun, the person in charge of the Swing uh, development product, has often said, or is quoted as saying in his blog, that JavaFX is really just about the scripting language. Then we have multiple environments on which JavaFX runs. So JavaFX mobile is really just an extension of using JavaFX script on mobile platforms. In fact, one of the uh, models or, if you will, the tagline that Sun uses to talk about JavaFX is it's the technology for developing all the screens of your life. Java has always espoused to the Wara mantra that write once, run anywhere mantra. Unfortunately, that's been very, very difficult to do. If you've ever had to develop an application for a desktop, and then get that same application working over the World Wide Web through a browser, you know, that's not exactly a seamless, easy transfer. And if you extend that into the mobile platform, again, we're typically left with, even if we can develop 
Java components that work across these multiple environments, it's very difficult to get the user interface to work from cell phone PDA devices all the way through our larger desktops and larger devices out there. Each UI has often created a need for us to develop separate pieces of the application that run in those different environments. Well, JavaFX is here to the rescue. JavaFX is all about developing those user interfaces that run across all the screens of our life in such a way that we develop the code once and run it in any of these environments. So JavaFX is what we call an RIA technology, Rich Internet Application Technology. We'll talk more about that in just a bit after we take a look at some JavaFX applications. It's provided through a single language, again the JavaFX scripting language, or just JavaFX for short, that does run on top of our Java Virtual Machines, our JVM. Yes, JavaFX is a technology that extends the current Java technology stack. And again, it's there for building all the screens of our life, not just for building web applications, but everything from mobile, uh, mobile device screen applications all the way up to uh, larger, uh, say, desktop to even mainframe applications. So one of the best ways to start to get an appreciation of what JavaFX is all about is possibly through just a little bit of a demonstration of some JavaFX applications, and in particular taking a look at the fact that this JavaFX application can run again on all those screens of your life. So allow me to bring up a small little demonstration application that uh, I have built using NetBeans. We'll talk a little bit more about NetBeans coming up in just a bit. At this point I'm going to run this application in what's called a default mode. And what that amounts to is running it as a simple desktop application. As you can see, I have started up my little going to Intertech application, and it comes up much like a Swing application would in a desktop window. And the uh, application gives me an opportunity to pick any particular direction from the Twin Cities and get uh, a little animation on how to get to uh, the Intertech training site via a little map. And as you can see, there's some animation built in as well as some nice little graphics. Again, a pretty simple little application, but you get the idea. Now that's a simple JavaFX application running on the desktop with no other compiling, no other work necessary. I'm going to switch now and run that on a mobile platform. So again, no new coding required, no compiling required, no additional work required, and now you're seeing that same application running this time on a mobile phone emulator. And of course, if we're talking about all the screens of our life, one of the bigger screens of our life is, in fact, on a browser. So one more time, I select a different mode of operation, if you will, a different uh, runtime environment. And now I'll bring up my browser and allow you to see the same application. Again, no recompiling, no coding, additional coding necessary. And now that same application is run through a browser. In fact, too, for those of you who uh, also enjoy writing applications uh, that use or take advantage of WebStart, JavaFX can also be run as a WebStart application. 